today on Bridges, it's lessons from the junk drawer. I'm Monica Schmelter, glad that you could join us. And I'm really glad that all of you could come out and be with us today at WHTN. How many of you have a junk drawer in your house? Yeah, some people even have a junk room, you know, just stuff that we keep things in. But you know, we know, you know, with a junk drawer, sometimes we've got receipts in there, we've got all kinds of stuff. And I know one thing that we all have in common is that we all have experienced shopping. How many of you have ever gone shopping before? Yeah. yeah, that's what I'm talking about. How many of you shopped online? Yeah, or we go to the mall or we go to amazon.com. Love the Prime membership, you know, where you get the two-day shipping. Isn't that wonderful? And in some areas, man, they've got it down to two to three hours. You can order ice cream and they can bring it to your door. I haven't tried it yet because I'm not in an area that does that, but when it comes to my area, I'm gonna order ice cream just because I can. <laughs> We've got Amazon, we've got the mall, and how many of you remember like back in the olden days, the Sears catalog? Yes. I can remember like when that Sears catalog would come to the door, it was so thick, and I would look at those pages and I would think about all the things that my parents could buy me. Do you remember they had a Christmas catalog? Yes. Was there not every beautiful outfit in the world that was in there and toys? And now, you know, Sears is just like not doing so well, but there was a day. But we all know that every time we buy something, we are given a receipt. How many of you have trouble keeping track of your receipts? Absolutely. So I ask you to keep your purses with you today. I want to see how many of you, if you can go through your purses, how many of you have any receipts in there? Now, Lisa, mm -hmm. I ask you <laughs> to plan ahead. I see you've got receipts in your hand. So the rest of you keep looking for your receipts. I won't ask you to read. I'm gonna ask Lisa, I'm gonna ask Maggie, but I just wanna see how many people have receipts. Lisa, tell me about some of the receipts in your hand. Yes, I have some receipts from retail for clothing. How much is that receipt? Oh my gosh, 100 bucks. 100 bucks, all yes. right. What else you got? I have groceries, 104. $104? Yes. Yeah, groceries cost a lot of money, don't they, guys? Yes. It's not cheap to eat. <laughs> yeah, and just a little, it looks like just a little home, some home goods home for goods. $39. $39. Okay, so now you guys have looked in person. If you've got a receipt, hold it up. Let me just see. Yeah, we got a lot of receipts. I know sometimes. I have to look a long time for those receipts in my purse, and sometimes like a year later, I'll find something that I bought, you know, last year. Maggie, what in the world? Well, you said you needed receipts. Uh-huh. And so Maggie I... Maggie got to plan ahead, guys, just yeah. so you know. <laughs> <laughs> when you mentioned that, I thought about the system, because I do have a hard time keeping up with receipts mm -hmm. and tracking them. Yeah. Because so money can get by really quick. Is that the system? You this put them in the a hat system. box? They go from my purse to my hat box. And then... How many pounds of receipts you think are in there? <laughs> this, is, this doesn't count my online. Oh, oh, okay, okay. Well, tell me about some of those receipts, Maggie. Well, listen, there's everything from coffee shops to sprouts, um, lots of nutritional stuff. Aldi's, we all love Aldi's, Aldi's. How much and is so the forth. Aldi's receipt? The Aldi's, this one is only $33. Okay, so you did well. You saved a lot of money. Absolutely, absolutely. So I have to ask you, since you keep all the receipts in the hat box, what do you do? with them well actually i go through with them i have as you can see i haven't been through them in a while yeah and then i break them down what is personal and what is for ministry i got and you. what is gifts okay. so i can track my spending so you really do do that to track your spending i do i write it all down and throw uh -huh. it in here yeah but if ever i need the receipt i can go back and find I got it you. so today it's lessons from the junk drawer and we're talking about receipts now, Lisa, what does, it, what does a receipt mean? When you get a receipt, what does it mean? That means that I purchased something mm -hmm. and I paid for it, and that's proof that I paid for it. It's proof that you paid for it. Yeah. Proof of purchase. How many of you had to return something and they ask for a receipt, right? And if you don't have it, if the item's on sale, they're going to give you less of a credit back. Lisa, what if I told you, read one of those receipts in a total to me if you would. $104.37. And what store is that from? Walmart. Walmart. So you've got a Walmart receipt for $104 and... $0.37. Cents. $0.37. Cents. Okay, so you all, if you had that receipt 
if I ask you to go back and pay for those items again, would you think that's weird? What would you do if I asked you to do that? I would say no. <laughs> Why would you say no? Well, because they're already paid for it. <laughs> <laughs> so you already paid for it, so yeah. you wouldn't go back and you wouldn't pay no, for it again. No. All right, so Maggie, let me ask you the same question, all those receipts. If I told you, Maggie, take those receipts, go back into the store and make all those same purchases, <laughs> Absolutely not. And why wouldn't you? Well, for one, they're all consumed because they're mostly grocery stores and coffee <laughs> shops. <laughs> but no, I've, it's already been paid for, and it wouldn't make sense. It wouldn't make sense. So, Lisa, what would your, like your husband, what would your family say if you said, I just bought these groceries, honey, and I just want to drive back to the store and pay for the groceries again? They would probably be confused. They wouldn't understand why I would repay for something that has already been paid for. Exactly, because a receipt means that you've already paid for something. And I think today's lesson from the junk drawer as we look at it is why do we try to carry the weight of our sins, Amen. like guilt, Amen. shame, fear, <coughs> torment, why do we carry that when Jesus has already paid the bill. Amen. Start to look at it that it's just as ridiculous for us to be tormented by our past, to be haunted by things that we've said or did. That's just as ridiculous as purchasing a cart full of groceries, getting them home, putting them away, and going back and say, you know, I would just like to pay for these groceries again. It doesn't make any sense. And so what we have to understand as believers in Christ is that the cross, it's our paid in full receipt. Yes. Anytime we're tempted to go back and pull something out from the past, to pull out even a thought, to pull out and to think, oh my goodness, I'm such a bad person, to think, well, I can't pray, because you know how we are? When we are caught up in bondage, it's really hard to pray. That's right. When we are caught up with the weight of our sins and our past, and that's what we're dwelling on, it is almost impossible to pray in faith because we've got all that junk in the way. We've got all the junk that he's already paid for on the cross and forgiven. Look with me at Colossians 2 and verse 14. It says there, he canceled the record of the charges against us and took it away by nailing it to the cross. In this way, he disarmed the spiritual rulers and authorities. He shamed them publicly by his victory over them on the cross. The cross is our paid in full receipt. It says that he canceled the record of the charges. So there were charges against all of us. There were charges of all of the things that we've done, the mishaps, the sins. And he took them away, nailing it to the cross. When he talks about disarming the spiritual rulers, it says he did that publicly. Like, in other words, there's no secret about it. The devil already knows he's been defeated. All the little demons and all the little imps, even though they're still trying to do their work and do their bidding, they know they have been defeated. That victory happened publicly on the cross. So the cross is your paid in full receipt. Now, Lisa, you read a receipt from Walmart for about $104.30. So if Walmart knocked on your door and said, we demand for you to pay again, what are some things that you might say? I'm going to say, hold on, let me get my receipt. Amen. Amen. So when those thoughts about our past, when those thoughts about our sin, when those thoughts about the worry for our future come, we got to go back to the cross by faith and look at it. And sometimes, you know, we need to take a reminder with us. It could be a cross necklace. It could be a card that you put in your wallet. Remind yourself that the cross is your paid in full receipt. That there was a public victory over the devil. He knows he's defeated. He's not all powerful, you all. He doesn't know everything. 
but he knows he's defeated, and the one thing you can say about him is that he's consistent. He still gets out there and tries to torment God's people. And, of course, he torments those that don't know Christ yet. He works at it night and day, and what he's hoping is that we'll forget that we have a receipt. Amen. He's like, you know, if I can just irritate you enough today... If I can just hurt you enough today, if I can just help you get your thoughts to the wrong path. Have you ever had him work to get your thoughts in the wrong path? Yes. There are times I have got so caught up in my thoughts. And you got to go back and you got to remember the cross is our paid in full receipt. So, Maggie, what would you do? That, that hat box. My goodness. I've <laughs> never seen that many receipts. I'm going to tell you that honestly. This is just one of three. One of three. Well, I'm glad that you keep track of your spending because you all know one lesson from the junk doors. If you don't keep track, you'll spend too much money. That's exactly right. Got to keep track. If any one of those merchants or those vendors came back to you, what would you do? Oh, my goodness. I would have them sit down for coffee because it would take a long time <laughs> to find their receipt. But I would tell them, I am certain it was bought and paid for. Amen. And one thing that we can be for sure is that we can be certain if we have faith in Christ and if we have declared Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior, our sins have all been paid for. Yes. The record of those charges are forgotten. So if he, through our sins, as far as the east is from the west and remembers them no more, why are we carrying them around? That's right. 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 Why allow even one moment of guilt or one moment of bondage? It is under the blood of Jesus Christ. Amen. That blood that he shed on that cross was for our total and complete freedom. Not just for Sunday when we go to church and worship for an hour and we feel good and then we go right back out and pick up all the stuff he's already paid for. Be free. Yes. Be free. Yes. The cross is our paid in full receipt. And that lesson from the junk drawer will see us through any and every situation. In just a moment, Jennifer McGill is going to tell us what's up next. You can purchase a copy of today's show for $15. Call us at 615-754-0039 or send a check to the address on the screen. Please mention the program number on the screen. The blood of Christ is the only cure. It gets down to the root of every single thing that ails us. There's not an addiction. There's not a generational curse. There's not any root of sin. There's nothing that the blood of Jesus cannot cleanse. Visit monicaschmelter.com to schedule Monica to speak at your event. Prayer changes things. If you need prayer, write to the address on the screen. Call 615-754-0039 or email prayer at ctntv.org. When I truly turned my heart to the Lord, He took every sin I ever did away from me. God really is your other half. God, yeah. he's the only person who can really, you know, fill those holes and cracks in your heart that you're so wanting someone to fill. It's no good to have a big dream if you're not putting yourself in motion to yes. go after that. Hey, this is Jennifer McGill. Thank you so much for joining us today on Bridges. Make sure you check out monicaschmelter.com for free study guides, videos, and other resources to help you discover your most beautiful life, one biblical truth at a time. And now we're gonna go on location to the Advanced Writers and Speakers Association Conference to hear more about Monica Schmelter's newest, latest book, Messy to Meaningful. Check it out. Well, I am so glad to have you, Rhonda Ray and Kaylee Ray, the mother-daughter team, yes. back on Bridges again. Yes. Thank you for Thanks. having us. Yeah. It's Man. one of my favorite places to be. Well, I'm just so glad to have you all, and we get to talk about a project that the three of us are working on together. What? I do not deserve to work with these two people. Let's just get that out there <laughs> right off the bat. 
I, I am unworthy. Until this moment, I, I wasn't sure I could fully believe it. <laughs> this legitimizes the Well, now that we've said project. it, exactly. Now yeah. we've said it, and mm -hmm. it will be on TV, so it's got to happen. Hey, <laughs> Monica, you don't have any choice now. <laughs> <laughs> it's too late to turn back now. Can't turn back. <laughs> well, Kaylee, tell us about this project oh, that boy. the three of us are doing together, the book and all that good stuff. Mm -hmm. well, Monica, don't you know? Yeah. It's <laughs> the book is Messy to Meaningful. Uh, life lessons from the junk drawer. The junk drawer. The junk drawer. Everybody's got a junk drawer. The junk right? drawer. I want to do it too. The, the junk, junk drawer. drawer. <laughs> yeah, you did great. Well, you know what, Kaylee? My thought was everybody's got at least one junk drawer. Yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. And what kind of stuff do we have in the junk drawer, Rhonda? We got junk. Junk. In the junk drawer. <laughs> well, first, let me say, I'll just get this out of there too. This was Monica's brilliant idea, and I absolutely love it because the, everybody does have at least mm -hmm. one junk drawer, mm -hmm. and it's filled with the most eclectic, bizarre bunch of stuff, mm -hmm. and it's a little bit fascinating, and it's actually already been hilariously fun going through some of those things, pulling out something weird from our junk drawer <laughs> and letting God teach us a lesson mm -hmm. from that. Yeah. I, you know, the thing is that the junk drawer is so relatable. Everybody that I say, you know, messy to meaningful, life lessons from the junk drawer, they're like, oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I've got duct tape. I've got a tape measure. Matches batteries. Matches. Mm -hmm. And everyone, I, for me, I always believe that I know what's in my junk, junk drawer, like, mm -hmm. oh, that's where I keep my this. Right. But anytime I open my junk drawer, I'm like, oh, I have no idea what this is or, or why I put it in this drawer. Yeah. yeah. That's one of my favorite things when you, you go, oh, yeah, oh, yeah, I was looking for that. And then you go, why do I have this? What even <laughs> is that? I, I don't know what that yeah. is. But, you know, sometimes it's like odds and ends, but we think that in the future, right, mm -hmm. we might need it, we might have need of it. And so I found in my junk drawer, like, instructions for stuff that we don't even own anymore. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Or you know how like some people will keep twist ties, which doesn't <laughs> seem completely, I don't even get that. But then you look and you see like those plastic tab bread ties and you're like, there's no, there's no use for that. Why? Twist, twist ties is suspicious, but the plastic tabs, mm -hmm. why do we have that? Put that in the garbage. Why do we have But you that? can't. Apparently. No, you can't. No, it, there are things not. that we have to hold on to. You would be and a bad steward mm -hmm. if you threw away those dead batteries. Yeah, dead batteries and like old cell phones and old remote controls. Like, what is that about, Rhonda? My glasses from 1979. Mm -hmm. yeah. Or things that you're not sure. Like, is this okay to put in the trash? <laughs> like, will this break the environment? I don't know. <laughs> well, it could break the environment, so what I think I'll do is keep it in the house yes. with me where in the I junk live. drawer because where this we, is... In the kitchen, probably, <laughs> where I eat. Exactly. <laughs> Can I just make a junk drawer confession? Certainly. I think I have a pen problem. It's like, I can't find a pen, but let me look in the junk drawer because not as, it, it's not one pen. There are 7,000 pens. Why do I think I need 7,000 pens? And still, I get out somewhere, no pen. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Exactly. And you know that you have all those pens, but I'm impressed that you had the time to count 7,000 <laughs> pens because it was 7,320. No, I'm just See, No, this is good, right, Kaylee? Yeah, and they're usually from different hotels, <laughs> so you can kind of map your way around, you know, across the country. <laughs> <laughs> I found like those little, you know, in the hotels, how they have the note paper mm -hmm. with their little logo. So I've got like some of that in there. I found old Christmas cards like from <laughs> 1974. Mm -hmm. It's like, hmm. And it's usually the ones from people that you don't know very well. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> They're not even like the real precious ones from no. the grands. Or... I was looking at the signatures thinking, did I ever know these people? <laughs> or it's like somebody that you've worked with, <laughs> like that they came in and... But you don't somehow know you're like. a bad steward mm -hmm. if you throw this away. Mm -hmm. what? Yeah. 
what? Yeah. What? But the good news is it can go from messy to meaningful. We're counting on you for that. We're exactly. going to cover the messy. <laughs> We're totally relying on you for the meaningful. For the meaningful. Life. Hope well, that's not a surprise. Uh, yeah, it is a surprise, but I'm used to this, <laughs> Rhonda, in yes. my discussions with you. Yes, you. It's a surprise a minute and a <laughs> kind of a spin on things that I hadn't given that any thought before. But I was amazed, you know, when I was thinking about this and the junk drawer and how in the world could you possibly go from that messy to anything meaningful or like life lessons from the junk drawer? So let's open up that conversation. How did we come up with life lessons from the junk drawer? How did, how did we come up with the lessons or how did, did we come up with the concept? Either, you could answer either. You can go, this can go any number of ways, Rhonda. Right. <laughs> concept, I shall throw back to you because this mm -hmm. was, again, your brilliant idea. We love you, we think you're awesome you're a lot deeper than we are let's get real um, I, I'm all Second. over yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but there is nothing in our junk drawer that can't be some sort of big God kind of lesson if you there is a God lesson in everything if we will recognize it and um, you know uh, if, if you find rolls of scotch tape or whatever yep. you can talk about how you let the wrong things stick to you and Isn't that or, or sticking to God and there mm -hmm. are so many lessons about things that God does in our lives to make our mess meaningful and really that's the overarching um, message that we want to communicate whatever your mess is yeah God can bring meaning absolutely and that you can look in that junk drawer it's just so relatable like everybody that I talk to just laughs hysterically just about when I talk about life lessons from the junk drawer they're like you know well, I've got a junk drawer and it's got all kinds of stuff but I think about everybody's got at least one tape measure in there right <laughs> at least and I think about you know how we spend so much of our time in lives unfortunately measuring ourselves against other people and whenever I do that Kaylee I always come up short like their hair always looks better the school they went to is better the car they drive is better the clothes they wear better and like that's a really pitiful place to be <laughs> and you can never win no because even if you start thinking that you are better then you're like what a prideful person <laughs> I am. There's, there's no <laughs> there's no winner in yes. the in the comparison yeah. game so i think in this project messy to meaningful i look at that you know and i took the tape measure chapter you remember that i do remember that and you know just talk about how really it is a comparison trap and we really have to trust God for whatever he's got for us that we run that race a hundred percent the nice thing since it's our own race we all get to win isn't that wonderful Rhonda and there is grace you know we've talked about this before there is grace for every mess I think people are so cute <laughs> when they when they clean out their junk drawer and they think it's never going to be dirty again it will never be messy and, and i just look at them and go you're so cute that, i give you three days exactly and then they start putting in the plastic bread things that we why why but the thing is it's an ongoing process we're yes, always going to have our messy and he will always be there with grace to bring the meaning and to to redeem it yes because every day that's why he says to renew our minds every day because every day is that opportunity to get on the wrong track to have the wrong thought that we need to take captive we never really get there it's every day's a journey isn't it Kaylee absolutely it is yes I agree <laughs> Jim with you. <laughs> As so usual, that's Kaylee. why we make I a good team. I am so <laughs> glad. Well, we're working on this thing together, which is so fun. We're in different states, but I mean, this is where technology helps mm -hmm. us out. Yes. And so, Rhonda, where are you on, because this is an upcoming project. We're talking to you about a book that isn't fully written just yet. Yes. So tell me about where you're at with it and what you've learned by looking at your junk drawer. Ah. Well, I have learned some things that I really don't want to put on camera. Thank you. Oh, okay. <laughs> I put you kidding. on the spot, didn't I? No, no, this is, I, there is something that really stands out in mm -hmm. my mind. I find this quite fascinating. Okay, so I, I keep, I am the keeper of the full manuscript. So as everybody finishes pieces, <laughs> I get to plug it in to the complete manuscript. And it is positively fascinating positively fascinating how the three voices are so different 
and so interesting. And when we put it all together, it's like it's a message. There's a message for everyone yeah. and delivered in a way everyone, I think, is going to uh, get something out of it. So that says a lot about how God can use all kinds Amen. of proof right here. <laughs> he can use all kinds of people mm -hmm. in all kinds of ways. Yeah. I love that. Yeah, and I think that that's one of, for me, one of the standout things about being able to work with other people on it, as opposed to just me going through my junk drawer and figuring out these lessons, to be able to read from Kaylee's perspective what is going on with her to read from your perspective and all three of our writing styles and perspectives are hugely different but yet the commonality is the grace and the love of God Absolutely. to take us from messy to meaningful. What, it was interesting because I was reading the first part of one of Kaylee's chapters and in her chapter uh, it, she starts off saying something about Monica is so great with stories mm -hmm. and then and then she starts talking about how yeah, probably I can't remember exactly, but that she's not exactly a, I won't say you're not a people person. What it is is. <laughs> what is it, Kaylee? <laughs> Tell us. I, I really appreciated how in, you know, you, you have these stories surrounding these objects right. that you've collected over the years <laughs> and, and how they really tie together. And I was reading through that and learning, thinking that's fantastic. And then thinking about my own self and, and stories and, and realizing that I'm probably the least sentimental person possibly <laughs> living on the planet earth right now because I, I i you know i don't have a sentimental attachment really to anything but if you tell me a story any story at all you know about people i am immediately drawn to that mm -hmm. and and i just love how you are able to do that and and even in just as i'm writing and looking at things and and giving them stories how that just makes these everyday things so much more meaningful to me. Yeah, and everybody that I've met that I've told them about this project, they tell me the stories about the stuff in their junk drawer. It's yeah. hilarious. It's like, oh, oh. we should be taking notes. Exactly. <laughs> 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 Would make the project easier. Yes. Why didn't I think of that? Why Rhonda, why didn't you say that earlier? I'm, I'm, I'm going to borrow everybody else's junk. <laughs> it's okay. We still got time. We're still, <laughs> we're, we're still writing it. We're still <laughs> writing it. It's still coming together, but it's messy to meaningful. And I think, Rhonda, you know, of course, all three of us, love God so much mm -hmm. and, and want to help ourselves and help others just walk in that grace. But to just trust Him as we work on this project, there's so many, it'll appeal, I think, to different kinds of people, different age groups. It's just good. I love it. I am so excited. Yeah. It's a fun project. We are out of time, but thank you, Kaylee, for coming. Thank you, So Monica. good to have you on Bridges again, and thank you, Rhonda. Thank you. It's been wonderful to have you. You can purchase a copy of today's show for $15. Call us at 615-754-0039 or send a check to the address on the screen. Please mention the program number on the screen. For more information on a guest, visit our website, ctntv.org. If you would like to contact WHTN, you can write to the address on the screen or call us at 615-754-0039 or visit us on the web at www.ctntv.org.